Howdy y'all. Let me start over. Welcome back to the channel guys. We are here in one of the biggest lots in Texas, IAA Dallas. This is the last lot we're visiting on our trip to Texas. However, it's gonna be a good one. This lot has a bit of everything. And word on the street, there's a couple classic Porsches here too. That's where I came in. The first thing I saw was a 2013 CTS-V. You know it's gonna be a good day when you're immediately seeing things like this. With this car, we didn't have to look far to find the damage. It is whacked in the front. Uh, the rear actually looks pretty good. This taillight is broken. That's kind of weird. Now, one thing I did notice when it was wrecked, they didn't take the time to shut the sunroof. So unfortunately, this interior is probably not going to be in the best shape. But I suppose we're not going to find out. We can uh, take a peek in this open sunroof, but otherwise, you guys can probably see that better than I can, but I can't imagine that's in great shape. Fortunately, it looks like this isn't pushed back far enough to do any type of damage to the engine. You have that front suspension damage there. That frame rail does have some issues, obviously. This is the whole apron right there that's kind of kicked back. One of the important parts on this car, the brake caliper did survive. Even though it's missing a wheel, still a good brake caliper. So you have a full set of those. That's good money on these. Now, I think someone may have got a little confused and threw a silver Veloster bumper. I think that's a Veloster bumper. Correct me if I'm wrong. Let me know what you guys think it is. Now, obviously, we can't start this thing, but we can still look and see. No, don't like that. Okay. Well, this changes things a little bit. So it is some kind of iron block. Um, this might explain why this car is sitting out here by the road, why it's not way back in their main lot, because this is kind of some little sub lot. Uh, I would bet that the insurance company is uh, looking into that. So just in case you are not familiar with what this is supposed to be, this is supposed to be the 6.2 liter supercharged LSA, and um, this is not that. So we're going to go ahead and leave this alone because uh, there's not much else to see here. We are definitely not buying this car. However, I would not be surprised if somebody else does when it eventually runs at auction. As bad as stuff like that looks, a lot of times those cars get completely looked over by people, including myself. That does present a little bit of an opportunity for somebody who wants a cheap CTSV roller or some kind of a project. So there might be some good parts left on there still. It might go for dirt cheap and it might actually end up being a good deal for somebody. It's just not going to be me. Now it's almost funny because the day that I'm filming this, Dot has a video coming out about CTSV specifically. You guys rarely see us buy them and honestly that's why. They are so frequently messed with at auction that it justified making a whole video about it. Now in this video we came in without a plan. We're just walking around and seeing what we find. And honestly sometimes that makes for the best salvage auction videos. I happen to notice this hood sticking over the Tiburon looks like an E90 M3 and it is. It doesn't have the right wheels on it but honestly I think these are old M5 wheels. Correct me if I'm wrong guys and it actually looks pretty damn good. I did have one of these back in the day. I was not personally a fan of it, but for everything I didn't like about it, one thing I did love about it is how they look. These cars are so, so good looking. I feel like this is one of those cars you're gonna look back in 20 years and it's gonna be absolutely timeless. Will they hold the value? Who knows? Now I did part a couple of these out, so I do know a little bit. This carbon interior trim is worth a few bucks. That's an option. Most of them are brushed aluminum, I believe. The silver rings around the speakers there indicate that this is like the high option sound system. So that's worth a few bucks. Uh, honestly, though that window's down over there, this interior is uh, pretty nice. It's a little dusty, but it uh, hasn't been exposed long. I think this car may have just got here. And while this isn't something we're going to be buying, it uh, looks like it's going to be a very nice car for somebody. Let's see if we can find what the damage is. The damage is simply listed as collision. So the only damage I can see is up here at the front. But honestly, the way that bumper is, it looks like it was kind of pulled backwards over something and popped it off. I wonder if we can see anything under the hood. There's the torqueless wonder, the good old four liter, if I recall, BMW V8. Somebody's definitely been inside the engine before, but that's not necessarily a bad thing with these because they do require some decent maintenance. The rod bearings are a big issue on this, so maybe that means it has the rod bearings done already. The car does have coilovers, though you can't really tell by looking at it from the outside. But trying to look a little further into where the damage is, even the radiator and whatnot down there, the oil cooler, is not damaged. But obviously there is something going on here that insurance deemed this a total. So maybe there's a small, small nick in the frame rail, something like that. This honestly looks like one of those totals that is primarily just bad luck. You hit the exact wrong place. Unfortunately, the car doesn't have any power, so we can't start it up. So we are going to go ahead and move on. Now, that was just the front part of this lot. We're now going into the back section, which is absolutely massive. I'm fairly confident I could spend all day here, though we're going to try not to. So we are not far inside this gate, and this is the first thing of interest that I saw. Now, fair note, we did pass up a Rolls Royce to come over here and look at this vet. So that tells you everything you need to know about me. We'll double back to the Rolls, but first, let's see what's going on with this. 
Now I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of very valuable insider information that it took me years to learn in the salvage industry. This car is hit in the front end. That's right, if you really know what you're looking for, you can see that this car is damaged in the front driver's side. It's as clear as day. That's a little interesting. It has a bunch of Texas mile stickers on it. So maybe this guy actually did something cool in this car. With that said, I wonder if we can get under this hood and see if it has any mods. And unfortunately, man, it does not look like we're gonna be able to. Electric release, door handles, the battery's dead. That's a, that's a bad recipe on vets. You guys have seen us on the channel have to break into them, and uh, we can't be doing that at an auction lot. From what I can see under here, the car doesn't look like anything special, but that aside, the rest of the car actually looks pretty good. I think most of the damage is isolated to right here. Um, now, did it hurt the frame? Yes, <laughs> yes it did. So this frame is kinked in there. So unfortunately, this is by no means gonna be an easy fix for somebody. And when you couple that with the damage back here, this car is likely destined to be parted out, maybe by us. You've heard me say it before, one of the things we love about IEA are the run videos. It gives us just a little bit more confidence when we're buying something from auction, so we can go back and though we can't get in that car and test it while we're here, we can hear it run right from their website. Now, just a couple cars away, we have this AMG E43 Benz. If you guys watch the other videos, you know that I do not know a whole lot about Benz, so I'm gonna rely on you guys once again to tell me what's going on with this car. It does look like it has some front end collision damage there, though it could have been being towed from something else and they could have ripped the lip off. That's obviously very common. My guess, judging by the windshield, is flood car. It's a real shame because this interior is absolutely beautiful and unfortunately no amount of air fresheners can make up for the fact that this car smells like a swamp. So we are gonna shut that up and walk away. You guys know by now, I'm a man of my word, we aren't gonna skip the rolls even though it's not my kind of car. I feel like you cannot come to a place like this, see a $250,000 plus car and not pay attention to it. In a gross display of ignorance, I have labeled this Bentley as a Rolls Royce. Honestly, they all kind of look the same to me. I personally do not see myself owning either brand of those cars, so for future reference on this channel, we're calling them Rollsleys. Maybe that way I look like slightly less of an idiot, though that may be offset by what's on my head right now, but I digress. Let's see what's going on with this car. This is some crispy leather. I had a phenomenal bacon, egg, and cheese taco this morning, and uh, it wasn't even that crispy. Wow. This reminds me of my old ZR1's dash, and you expect that out of a Chevy? Um, probably not what you wanna see out of a Rosley. Now, all jokes aside, this window is down, so that's probably what caused that. It's probably just getting torn up by the sun. You don't see that on the other door panel over the I lied, yes you do. Otherwise, the interior looks actually really nice. You have tan on blue, which I'm not a big fan of dark blue interiors, but uh, this car pulls it off really well. I think the tan blue combo, being that the outside of the car is the same color blue, actually works. You have some mechanical damage here as far as the inner cooler. Some of the suspension down there is not in that great a shape. The wheels damaged, obviously. But from a body standpoint, from a frame standpoint, looks pretty good. But once we get a little further into it, you see this note from the insurance company, broken seam seal. Somewhere down here, because I'm not seeing it right there. There is no seam sealer to be seen anywhere up here, which you would expect on a $250,000 car, I suppose. But maybe somewhere down under that, it has a broken spot well, broken seam sealer, whatever, and that's why this thing was totaled. Because unless it has some kind of mechanical engine damage, I definitely would not see that as enough to total a car like this. Let's see if it has power. So it does. The rolls earlier in the trip had it, and this one does as well. So let's see if this thing starts up. Now, one important note, because of that stain right there, my first thought was there's some kind of broken oil cooler in this. So I did look this over thoroughly. The best I can tell that's from a different car because this car is still full of oil. Nonetheless, we're not gonna let this thing run long. Let's go ahead and shut it off because we're not buying this car. And uh, if you're interested in it, you can hear it run right on IAA.com. Now that we're finished up with that, let's keep it rolling. Yeah, you get it, that was, that was a dad joke. And we're gonna take a hard right because that popped out of the corner. And this is a beautiful Night Race Blue C7 Z06. One of my favorite colors on these cars. Very rare on the C6, not as rare on the C7. Excuse the noise behind me, the IA lot guys are doing their thing. But just looking out the outside, can't see any damage on this thing. This is a very nice looking car. Once again, dead battery, so we're gonna have to pop in through the window. This car has ultra clean interior, like ultra, ultra clean. Comp seats, exactly what you want. And uh, unfortunately, I cannot find any damage on this. Let me go look at the sticker here, which I've been instructed not to show you, but we're gonna see what the deal is with it. And unfortunately, this is a flood car. So this car has seen better days. Uh, judging by the interior though, I think it's pretty obvious that this was cleaned. Uh, it does not look that bad. The interior is dry, it's clean, it doesn't smell bad. Let's go ahead and look under the hood. Maybe that'll tell us a little more about how high the water got. 
And unfortunately, we are going to learn nothing because it looks phenomenal. So we can't start this thing. We can't get inside of it. We can't do much other than walk around it and say it looks good, so we're gonna move on. Though if somebody's looking for a clean body that may need some electrical work, that's a winner. Beautiful car. All right, we've reached the back corner where they have tried to stash all the Teslas. Now, I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on this because I know it's not what most of you wanna see, but if there are some of you guys out there that wanna see a EV only Salvage Yard walkthrough video, let me know and I will happily do one. At some point, we are gonna get into buying these cars because, well, tough pill to swallow for some of you guys, but it's the future. Every other car just feels dumb, you know? But I'm gonna go ahead and mosey around this plaid because in case you've been living under a rock for the past two years, these things are disgustingly fast. It went from, I would never want to own one of those tree hugger hippie cars to, hey, that's actually pretty cool. So while I'm walking around hunting for something else cool, go down in the comments, let me know your thoughts on EVs. Are you a believer yet? Will you ever be? Or are you one of the people that would rather walk than drive one? Let me know. Now, in case you were about to click out of the video, don't worry, we're done with the EVs. Just to make it up to you, here's a Mustang on slicks. And by slicks, I mean drag radials, but you know what I mean. Now, usually people do take that stuff off before the car goes to auction, so I'm curious to see what they left on under the hood. I mean, so I, expectations keep getting higher. I mean, you have a racing seat, you have radials on it. You know, I don't know about replacing one of the best color combos to ever grace the S197 Mustang with a Corbeau, but that's a story for another day. Let's see what's under the hood. Don't disappoint us. Don't do it. Fingers crossed, guys. Blower. Okay, so no blower, but that is a nice intake manifold setup with the dual throttle bodies. Still a pretty nice setup. I wonder if it has nitrous or anything of the like. Now, I don't see anything right now, but still a nice car. And honestly, if this ends up being a fully built NA, the radials are completely justified. Unfortunately, we are not going to find out just how good it sounds because it has no power. So we're going to say goodbye to this phenomenal condition interior and keep it moving. And we're not going to have to go far because we're headed right over there. Now I'm, not, now, I'm not sure that we have any GTO guys that still watch this channel. And if they do, I'm very sorry about the PTSD. This thing is a very special car. It is a Spice Red 0506 GTO. It's a fairly rare color. And this is hitting just the way that we love to buy them. Yes, the 0506 bumpers are worth a few bucks. Yes, the trunk's worth a few bucks. But we can live without that if the entire front end's good. Right, let's check on the interior. It is a manual, even better. Silver gauge cluster, that's worth a few bucks. Let's go ahead and pop the hood and I have a feeling that cable's broken because it feels like it is doing absolutely nothing. Let's see if we got lucky. And we did not. So unfortunately, this is where we're going to leave it. I'll go back to IAA.com, listen to the run video. Now, if this car ends up having a blower, turbo, something like that, I'm going to be very disappointed that I didn't get to show you guys, but not much we can do about it. Now, this thing is hard to miss because of those beefy fender flares. We have a wide body Hellcat beautiful cars the wide body stuff pulls fantastic money so we love it from a parts standpoint but unfortunately for us it looks like this thing's wrecked in a way that's going to be a fairly easy fix it does look like it hit something down there as far as the ac condenser radiator heat exchanger that whole deal so that would need to be replaced but otherwise this thing looks really good very basic interior trim but a nice car nonetheless it's in fantastic shape no bags are blown the seats look good the panels look good before i get called out that is not a curtain airbag it is sealed shut outside of the car unfortunately this one does not have any power either but fortunately for us the hood is popped well a little bit dirty it does have a jlt catch can so that's pretty cool my main concern when I see a car hit like that, as you guys have heard me say on countless occasions, is did the engine get hit? I did take a quick peek under it, though I couldn't really show you guys much. Judging by that and what I'm seeing from up top, the fan is back a little bit, but it didn't even come close to the crank pulley. I think this is a good engine. It is listed as having an engine start video, so you can head over to IAA.com and check it out if you want to hear this car run. I don't see us buying this car, so if one of you guys want to buy it, I'll go ahead and check the oil for you. The oil is perfectly full and looks pretty clean. So we know the oil pan did not get smacked off this thing. I think this is going to be a great one for one of you guys to fix. So if you want this thing, make sure you put it in the comments. If one of you guys end up buying it, I would love to see the finished product. So now we got to the end of that row with the Hellcat and I walked right smack dab into the middle of the good stuff. So when I do these videos, more often than not, the lot managers ask if I wanna know where any specific cars are, and I generally tell them no, unless I'm looking for one thing in specific. You might ask yourself why, why do I make it harder on myself? Why do I wanna to have to walk around the entire lot to find what I'm looking for? Well, because when you find a section like this, it makes it all the sweeter. And I did mention that there's a couple old Porsches here. Here we go, number one. 
If you're on the channel, you may already know that I recently bought a terrible condition manual 997 turbo. And fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, it kicked off quite the Porsche addiction in me. I've been looking at them nonstop ever since, and these old ones are really doing it for me lately. This is a manual 92 911. I don't know if they made them an automatic. Hopefully they didn't. I'm sure most of you guys know that these are air-cooled, and lately these things have been skyrocketing in value. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I don't know what I'm looking at under here. Though I would like to own one of these one day, it would be very hard for me not to swap this with a modern engine. Like, say, maybe a 997 GT3 engine, something along those lines. But from a body standpoint, this thing looks good. It looks like, judging by the flat tire and the fact that that rocker is broken or off, it looks like it might have had some type of collision damage there. Otherwise, being a Texas car, from what I can see from the outside, the thing looks pretty rust-free. Now, I don't know how big of an issue rust is on these 911s. However, most cars of this age are suffering from some type of rust issue i can't imagine this is any different the interior unfortunately does not look as good as the exterior the seats are kind of ripped the carpet has seen way better days the dash is cracked the shift knob is blown out but i mean what do you expect i suppose right unfortunately this also has no power so we are not gonna be able to start this thing up either i've been seeing a lot of these at auction recently and they are also pulling crazy money but it's not so crazy in comparison to what the clean ones are pulling so if you're looking for one for a project something like this might be right up your alley now you guys have heard me say many times i am not a g-wagon person i am not a suv person but can't ignore it i'll go ahead and take a walk around it in case any of you guys happen to want one of these cars for yourself fairly obvious what happened here it uh smacked the curb or something like that even the brake rotor has a chunk out of it it did damage this panel which isn't exactly a fender but isn't exactly a door i don't know what the deal is with that it also got hit up here and oh look at the roof so something happened to this car on the top i don't know exactly what and i'm not going to put too much effort into finding out also the front is completely scuffed up though not wrecked so who knows what happened to that thing i will let you guys speculate on that now again i did just say how much i'm into porsches still can't get into macans anything like that just not my cup of tea this is an 88 air-cooled targa now while i know these cars are expensive i'm not sure what pulls more money if it's the targa or the hard top stuff that we just saw over there now it was a little unclear why the other one was here this one it's pretty obvious we have that damage over there on the drive quarter and this more significant damage over here on the passenger quarter and while it does look bad a lot of the cars of this era are not that bad to fix because they don't have 20 pieces of different structural metal in there this is once again something that would be a perfect donor car so if you have a straight chassis or even just a good rear end of one seems like a pretty good car and in this one the interior is in beautiful shape for the year you know it's hard for me to see any red interior on a black car and not love it but this one is like extra good in my opinion extra extra good this was somebody's really nice car before this thing got wrecked that is a complete shame uh-oh i don't know what happened there uh it didn't like me touching that key but uh I suppose it stopped, so we'll go ahead and see if we can start it. Oh, I think that's just the horn. Yep. So this cable is wrapped around the clock spring. If there is a clock spring in that, it, uh, it grounded out the horn, and that's what was yelling at us. I thought it was kind of weird to have an alarm on this. Oh, we do have, we do have power. Make sure she's in neutral. Oh, it has much better oil pressure than my 997 does, that is for sure. However, it also smokes like my 997 does, Jesus. Now, while I currently have two Porsche projects already and I am not in any mood to buy another one, a black one that smokes? Now heading back across the pond to the good old US of A. I get excited when I see one performance pack third gen Coyote, much less two in the same spot. You would almost think they set this up for me, but I promise you guys they did not. This is completely random. The first one over here is hit pretty good in the passenger side. Actually, they are both hit in almost the same exact way. Wow. This front one does have a Borla exhaust. I cannot imagine the trend of similarity is gonna continue and it does not, factory exhaust. So we're not seeing double, we're not hallucinating from the Texas heat. Let's see what the interior holds on this one. Oh, digital cluster car, fantastic. Those are big money. If you couldn't tell by the wheels or the Brembos, it's a performance pack car. On these cars, you can always tell by the front Brembos. You can tell by the wheels, though people often put these wheels on non-performance pack cars. But another telltale way to see it is those gauges right there. Any one of these that you see at auction that has those gauges should also be having that set of brakes. Go ahead and pop these hoods. 
Unfortunately, there is not much to see under this one, but this is the one with the stock exhaust, so maybe this is just a bone stock car. The good news is it doesn't appear to be damaged, modified, messed with in any way. So that one was an automatic digital cluster car. This one is a manual non-digital cluster car, and you can see the difference right there. This is still a good car. It's still a performance pack, and the interior is fairly clean. Let's go ahead and see what's under the hood on this one. And it still looks fairly stock, though we do have a JLT intake. If you look down there, this one actually has a set of headers on it, which is fairly uncommon on the Coyote cars. We don't get a lot of them with aftermarket headers simply because it is an absolute pain to install them. I'd venture to say over half the LS cars we get have headers and less than 10% of the Coyotes do. We do have power on the first one here. Uh, this is definitely some kind of short shifter too, for sure. Don't know what brand it is. I'm not going to go popping this panel off, but it definitely has some kind of aftermarket shifter. All right, bombs away. Yeah, sorry for the shake in the camera. That is a habit, so you're gonna have to deal with it. Fortunately, it won't happen on that car, don't worry. This is just how we like Coyotes. Loud exhaust, quiet engine. These Gen 3s with the direct injection tend to tick. This one does not. They call it the typewriter tick, I believe. This one sounds super healthy. Only 12,000 miles on this car. This is gonna make somebody a very nice fixer. It also has practically no gas in it, so we're gonna go ahead and shut it off. Now let's see if we're gonna go two for two on good coyotes. Unfortunately, this doesn't have power, so I'm not gonna get to show you that beautiful cluster today. However, we get them in fairly often, so I'll make it a point to show you guys that one day and show you just how much nicer they are than that car up there. That about does it for this pair of Mustangs. Let's go ahead and take a look at that damage one more time. I would venture to say as bad as this one looks, especially this one, that somebody is going to fix this. These cars are pulling ridiculous money. They're both low mile cars. This one we may have a better chance because once you start getting this firewall in, people tend to want to stay away from it. So we may be able to buy this one. That one up front, I am going to assume is going to go for too much money, but you never know. We'll keep an eye on the auction and maybe you'll see these both on the channel. Now, as I was finishing up with those, I caught this out of the corner of my eye. I don't know anything about these cars, but I noticed it looked a little special. I'm going to let you guys tell me all about this. This is an AMG SL500. I don't know what year. I haven't even looked at the sticker before, so we'll check that in a second. But I do know there are some very big money AMG cars of this air. Maybe this is one of them, likely not, but I want to throw it in here just in case I would hate to have something special here and walk right past it. And this is a 95. So if this is anything special, make sure you guys let me know about it in the comments, but I'm not going to spend too much time on it. It's kind of the same story with this. Obviously it was on fire at some point. Uh, it looks pretty cool. It's an old Oldsmobile. Once again, I know nothing. So if you guys do, if this is anything special, if this is a very valuable car, make sure you let me know in the comments. And one thing I do know is it is absolutely massive. This might be the biggest car I've ever seen in person. Add to the list of what I know, this interior is awesome. Beautiful. It looks like this was just done yesterday, to be honest. Wow. If I saw this car at Barrett Jackson, it would not look out of place. Well, other than the fire, but you get my point. Even though I don't know much about them, it's still a beautiful car. Sucks to see it burned up like that. And right behind it, I have a feeling this is not your ordinary Cayenne. Those wheels, they look a little special. Those brakes, suspiciously big. The interior, though not the color I would have chosen whatsoever, is actually in nice shape. Obviously, there's a couple blown bags. But nonetheless, you can see right there on the cluster, it says GTS. So it turns out my Porsche spotty senses were correct. This is special. I don't know what these cost. It looks like a brand new car. I also have not checked the year on this yet, but as far as damage goes, it's really not bad. It is isolated to the front end and the front end only. Wow, this is a 2021. Unfortunately, due to the fact that the engine up here looks like it may have been touched or messed with or something, I'm not gonna start it, but we can take a look nonetheless. There is not a speck of rust or corrosion on this thing. Now, as far as fixing something like this, it doesn't look like it has much frame damage. However, I find it very hard to believe they would have totaled this car if it did not. We all know buying from dealers is absolutely crazy at the moment. So if you're looking for one of those, maybe that's the ticket. Once again, as I'm walking through the lot, not gonna spend much time on this, but those wheels give it away. This is another AMG. I don't care for these whatsoever, but I know a lot of you guys and a lot of people in general go crazy for these things. So we'll go ahead and take a peek inside. 
not a bad looking car. A little dirty. If you asked me to imagine a Mercedes interior of this air, this is probably about what I'd say it looked like. So it does have power. Let's look at the front end, make sure nothing's busted up before we go start in this thing. Well, some of the piping's off, so unfortunately I'm not gonna touch this thing. It looks like the actual engine itself is untouched, but that damage right down there in the corner pushed that piping up and I uh, don't necessarily wanna go messing with this. So. So we are going to go ahead and shut this car up and move on. All righty, just wanted to happen past this base model Challenger. Nothing to see here, just the same as my rental. Let's keep it moving. Sweet sticker package though. Oh, hold on. So this was not intentional. I went over to see that very large sticker and notice that carbon fiber right there. You can't really tell what this is from behind, but when you start to look a little further forward, I think this is a Gen 3 CTSV. Oh no. Oh no. Well, it was a Gen 3 CTSV. This thing is pretty much not good for anything except a couple body panels, maybe the interior. The f Holy shit. I bent down to look at that Brembo and there's a damn bird's nest under there. Jesus Christ. Scared the shit out of me. So it does have a Brembo. Now that my heart rate is 140 beats per minute. Let's see the inside. Well, the inside's still nice, so if you need an interior for one of these, for repairing a flood car or something like that, maybe this is the cheap option, who knows. Not too far away from where I was viciously attacked from a bird, we see this, a C7 Z06 convertible that we will definitely not be getting in. It is a fairly light wreck. Obviously, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this rear tub does have some damage. Well, as we move on to the driver's side, it, uh, it appears this might be a little bit of a heavier wreck than I had first anticipated. Actually, this is quite a hard hit. It broke a steel brake rotor down there. That whole side of the frame is mangled. Red interior, beautiful car. Unfortunately, it has uh, probably seen the last of being on the road. This is destined to be a parts car. Anytime you can get a car that is hit so hard in the side, where it's total, where it's not a fixer, and the front end's good, it usually ends up being a winner from a parts value standpoint. We're just gonna go ahead and keep it rolling to see if this is a true Celine down here. I only really know the Coyote car, so this is my Mustang inexperience showing. It looks like it is a Roush car. But I believe these are, what, four sixes, which aren't anything to write home about. Now, I'm sure somebody in the comments is going to have something to say about that, but they're slow. Don't at me. Now, even though this doesn't have the popular power plant, the Coyote, which is a great selling power plant, they put it in anything and everything these days, it does have a lot of body panels, some of which I would venture to guess are fairly rare. Unfortunately, the spoiler is no longer good, but that rear bumper is something I've never seen on a Mustang before, so I can't imagine it is incredibly common. So maybe this has that rare Roush piece that you've been hunting for for years and you haven't been able to find. This is your opportunity to get it. Now here's a car that has seemingly doubled in price on the salvage market over the past year. We used to buy a lot of 370Zs, not so much anymore, especially the new Nismos. People simply pay way too much money for them and to the best of my ability, I cannot understand how they're making money maybe there's something going on with these that i'm just not seeing but if you notice down there two-piece brake rotors somebody might have been using this the right way two-piece brake rotors all around it has some kind of exhaust though i know these nismos do have some kind of an upgraded exhaust from the factory so maybe it is that the nismo wing is actually in good shape though there is stuff zip tied to it Let's go ahead and check inside. And this does not have the Recaros, but what is that? To me, that looks like a sequential shifter. So it is not, however, it is a beautiful short shifter. This thing feels phenomenal. Don't know what brand it is. Somebody let me know in the comments, but this thing, whoever makes this, bravo, because this thing, I would shift this all day. In fact, I might do just that. If this car cuts on, maybe I'll just sit in here in the AC and play with the shifter all day. Unfortunately, that's not going to be the case because it does not have power. All right, turbos, 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 turbos. Cross your fingers, guys. Toes to cross everything you have. It is a stock VQ. Okay, never mind. Moving on. Let's just stand here and look at that for a moment because is that what I think it is? Is that a Viper? Well, we got our answer. Yes, it is. This is a Gen 3 or 4. And um, yeah, it is not in great shape. And I think that's the understatement of the year. 
who knows what happened with this thing i don't know if it was wrecked or if it was stolen the damage is listed as theft so that sucks maybe somebody's baby got stolen maybe it's something a little more shady who knows if there's something you think you could actually use this for put it in the comments is it the perfect start to a track project? Is it a donor for who knows what? Do you want to turn your convertible into a coupe? If there's something you'd use this for, let me know because I'm not seeing it. And I am pretty creative when it comes to projects. I will take any hunk of junk and try to put it back on the road. This one might be a little past what I'd take on. Now I did just happen to walk past this truck and catch a glimpse of something that's in the bed. And before I show you, if you guys watch the other videos, we have a habit of finding weird, cool stuff in truck beds in these lots. And while it might not be a Shelby part, we got a slick back there. So don't know how that got there, cool nonetheless. We are way deep down in the lot now and we see this C6, it has had a little bit of a minor front end collision. I will say this spoiler is something else. I would make the joke that it's a Mako paint job, but honestly that kind of seems disrespectful towards Mako. So we're gonna leave that alone. Hood won't open, got it. This is an 07, so it is an LS2, and it is an automatic. It looks pretty disgusting on the inside as well. That will definitely happen with a convertible like this because sometimes it gets left open before IA ever gets to it and ever gets to close it up like this. Maybe we'll keep this on for a second and see if we can find something together here. And no, it's not going to be that white truck with red steelies. Oh, I do see something interesting over there. Don't know what it is at all. I have a feeling I'm not going to know what it is after we look at it, but we can't ignore it. So according to the sticker, this is a 32 Ford, and needless to say, I don't think these cars were crash tested very well because it put the engine block way back into the firewall. Now maybe that's how they're supposed to be, I don't know anything about these, but uh, it does not look like it held up very well in this wreck whatsoever. I'm not going to lie to you guys, I would not want to be driving this car when this thing got wrecked. I've seen some very bad wrecks on modern cars, and this looks like it may be a little more painful. Whew, the car is kind of bowed in half. This was like swayed that way. This is out that way. I don't know what engine this is either. So because I have absolutely no other insight to give you on that car, we're going to keep it pushing. Now we have got way to the back corner. As far as this CR goes, you can kind of see the scope of it. We are way, way, way in the back. This is the extra well done, super crispy section of the lot. We have some kind of 1980 something here. Don't know what it is. It's probably fiberglass. That'd be a good guess. Nothing else here jumps out as being anything special, weird, or fun to look at. So let's roll. We have been looking and looking, and it's been a minute since we've seen anything special. However, I think this meets the criteria. I haven't been in the front yet, but I'm going to guess the damage is up there. I believe this is the competition package based on the wheels. If you guys don't already know how I feel about red interior, then you haven't been paying much attention. Red stitch dash, carbon trim, red seats, red door panels. Perfect interior. Perfect. And that is where the perfection on this car ends because this thing is not looking too hot. Well, hold on. I guess it kind of is looking hot. You know, sometimes the puns find themselves. Unfortunately, the hood latch and everything around there is completely melted. If you really want to see under the hood, you're going to have to go to IA.com. Though it is an SUV, it is the perfect color, and it's a Porsche. So, I would be amiss if I didn't come over here and check this out. So this is a Macan, I believe. Don't kill me if it's actually Cayenne. It looks like it's honestly not damaged too bad. Obviously, this intercooler is sheared off, so we're not going to get to start this thing. I don't want to do any damage to it. And just like the last one, while it looks perfectly fine, I can't imagine they would have totaled this thing if there wasn't something else going on here. So maybe it's smacked in the rear too. Let's see. So no, it's not. It is in good shape. And yes, it is a Cayenne, so excuse my ignorance. Let's see the interior. So this is pretty much the steering wheel that I need for my 997 without those controls and without paddles. So if anybody has one, give me a shout. But now that I'm done plugging my parts needs, how about this houndstooth interior? I believe that's what that's called. That pattern has always screamed Porsche to me. And I've seen a couple of Recaro racing seats covered in that as well. Maybe that's gonna be a good option for my 997. If that's something you'd like to see, put it in the comments. No words needed, no words needed. Hellcat, hell yeah. Nothing here is topping these wheels. I'm calling it right now. Best wheels of the episode. The paint on the front bumper has seen better days, but the wheels sure are fly. Who makes these? 
Corleone Forged. Cannot say I've heard of them. The sticker says Lost Type Theft. So obviously, somebody really, really wanted these wheels. Fortunately, it doesn't look like they got them. 24s on the wide body, super sick. The interior has to live up to those wheels, right? Okay, all right, we have some blue stitching. It's not a super stock car. That's all that matters. All right, now I'm confused because if this is a real Daytona, shouldn't it have stickers like the one we saw in the last video? I need a Mopar guy to school me on this. We saw a Daytona in the last video. I thought it was very special. It was number 169, I believe, of 501. It had stickers everywhere to let you know. This thing has nothing. Now, did this person buy a Daytona interior and put it in a regular Hellcat? Or is this person simply much more subtle, which is hard to believe when you see the wheels, about the fact that he has a limited edition Daytona? Unfortunately, it doesn't have any battery power, so we're not going to hear that kitty roar. And uh, I can't believe I just said that, so let's keep going. And I suppose we just went from the best wheels of the episode to the best paint job. Alrighty. Somebody is not really happy. This person obviously pissed the wrong person off and they gave his V6 Mustang a fresh new paint job. Did they get inside? It doesn't look like it. The inside actually looks halfway decent. Can't make out what that says. Let me know in the comments if you guys can see. It's a little hard to see because of the sun. Now, who would have thought seeing one rolls late a yard is rare, but seeing two in the same spot on the same day, that is never mind. If this isn't a buzzer beater, I don't know what is. There's the exit. We are on our last row. We had already given out our best paint job. We had already given out our best wheels, but it just got one upped. And now while these are only 22s, and while they're not the Corleone Forge, they are MTW, whatever that is. I like the color better. So by default, the gold wheels win. He hit you with the and one with the color match brake calipers that actually look really good. You've seen plenty of bad spray painted calipers on this channel. However, that is not one of them. So he does have a YouTube channel. Let's see, shout him out there, living like Iggy. Sorry about your eye, bud. I guess that's his Instagram and let's see what's inside. Oh man, not comp seats, but they're red. And honestly, while I was kind of joking about this color because it's a teal, which in itself is good, but it has pink flake. I'm not sure how well you can see that. I'm gonna give him props on the interior because that's a great combo and on this color, it actually looks pretty cool. The car does have a little too much front end damage for me to want to get in there and start it up. There's all kinds of stuff hanging down. So we're not going to risk further damaging this beast. But as you guys know, we can still look under the hood. We definitely didn't have to worry about popping it. So this car used to be white. There's that. And it looks fairly stock as far as the intake goes. It looks like it does have a set of headers on it, however. And with that fourth quarter buzzer beater like Kawhi in Toronto, that's going to do it for this episode. While I got a little help from the clouds earlier, the Texas sun is out in full force and whooping my ass for the third day in a row. That unfortunately brings an end to my time in Texas as we walk past a V8 Camaro, so we're going to stop for just a second. We'll keep this brief. Fifth gen Camaro, it's a automatic, so it is an L99. It looks very clean. Front end damage. Radiator support is pushed back. Radiator damage. Engine does not look like it took a hit whatsoever. The intake itself is damaged. It has some pretty sick horns. Nice wheels. It even has expensive tires. This would be a good one, and I'm going to have to take a serious look at this thing on IA.com. Maybe you'll see this one on the channel in the future. As nice as it was, it was no match for the old Corvette back there. So that thing is still the coolest, most unique, odd, whatever you want to call it, car we saw today. But once again, for real this time, that's going to do it. I am hopping a flight out of this desert tonight and headed back to the swamp of Maryland. So once again, Again, I hope you enjoyed this series of out-of-town salvage auction lot visits. If you did, make sure you let me know in the comments. Make sure you let me know if you want to see more. Otherwise, I'm going to keep doing them anyway, and you guys are just going to have to sit through it. But even if this was not your cup of tea, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the other fun stuff we have going on. As I turn the camera one last time, shout out Fred, shout out Kyle, shout out everybody at 1320. We had a blast with you guys at TX2K. Can't wait to do it again. And before I get distracted anymore and die of a heat stroke in this damn desert, I will see you guys next time.